In this lesson, and the final lesson of the tutorial, we're going to use Gambit to solve a sequential or an extensive form game. So when you open Gambit, you can go to File, New, and Extensive Game, and it will give you this screen. So let's do a simple game where first player one moves and then player two moves. I'm going to right click this first node here and insert a move. We're going to insert the move for player one. We're going to do it at a new information set. I haven't touched too much on what information sets mean, but this allows for imperfect information and players not to know where they are in the game tree. <clears throat> we touched a little bit about this on this in the first section of videos in part one of the tutorial in Bayesian games. But for now, because everything is going to be complete information and players will observe everything that happened before them, we're always going to do at a new information set. And we're going to let player one have two actions. Let's label his actions just simply high, H, and L for low. <clears throat> now, after player one acts, after choosing H or L, we want to let player two do something. So we go to insert move for player two. Again, we're always going to do a new information sets, and we're going to give him two actions. And similarly, we'll call, I guess, his action up and down. And we'll do the same thing here. And we'll call his actions, again, up and down. Now, the last thing to put in are payoffs. And I'm just going to enter some numbers. You just double click here where you see the little U. And I don't know, first number two, second number one. And this means that if player one plays H and player two plays U, player one gets a payoff of two, player two gets a payoff of one. It's nice here that everything is color coded for you. I'm just entering some random payoffs so we can see how this works. Oops. Okay, so now we just go to tools, equilibrium. We're just going to compute one once again. Hey, and we get an equilibrium. So what does this say? So remember, red is player one, blue is player two. So this says player one at information set one, that's what this one means, he should play L with probability one and play heads, or sorry, L, which means low with probability one, and H, which means high, with probability zero. Player two strategy are now in blue. Now remember, player two has to condition on what player one did. So what this says is if player one, I'm sorry, if player two is at its first information set, which is this up here, when player one played H, player two should play D. And this makes sense, right? Because if player two finds itself here, then it should play D because it prefers three over one. Similarly, this here says player two at its second information set, note here, two, its second information set, which corresponds to player one playing low, should play up with probability zero and down with probability one. And what this means once again is that, okay, if player two finds itself here, it should play down because it prefers four over two. So in this case, Gambit has solved for a Nash equilibrium in this game. As an exercise, we're going to see if Gambit solves for subgame perfect equilibria, especially when you let it solve for all equilibria. I hope you enjoy that one. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with me on the second tutorial of game theory. I hope you enjoyed both the first set of videos and second set of videos. And I hope that you learned something that you can apply to your daily life as well as your studies in complexity. Thank you very much.